Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of the bi-weekly webinar where we give you what's on our mind. We give you what our thinking is and that may be worth something to you. So thanks for tuning in if you're here. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. Uh, we're continuing to do a lot of work behind the scenes uh, because you deserve it. So you bring us on to do so. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Uh, normally start by going big. I'll give you a couple of headlines today as well. We'll have Mike Minute, Zach's Facts, and Ken's Corner. And today we'll have Jen giving us what to really pay attention to at Gentian with all the different things we have going on. So again, thank you for being here. My gratitude today is spending a wonderful weekend where um, for those who are Christian, um, he is risen. And we spent that with our family, both my mom in Cedar Falls and then my wife's family in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, beautiful places. Of course, tropically warm, 70 degrees plus, as many of you may have uh, experienced here in the Midwest. So it was a glorious weekend for glorious weather, glorious conversations, and a wonderful chance for me to practice our new book, Cub book, which is going to be called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Really, how to treat people better and be a better human. So that's my go big. There's a whole lot more that I could go big with, but I'll just start with that. How about uh, you, Ken? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Good to be here with all of you this morning. Uh, it's beautiful outside. It feels like Florida for, for us here in Wisconsin right now, but uh, golf season upon, is upon us. Uh, some of you share the, the love and the passion for, for golf. It brings us patience, friendships, challenges, the exercise, the highs and the lows. And this is what we in Wisconsin wait for days like this right now. So golf season is upon us. Uh, it's going to bring a lot of fun for us in the summertime. For those who are in Florida, they're like, well, I don't know what you're talking about because we've been golfing all year. <laughs> but uh, but now here in Wisconsin, we, we, get, we get pretty excited about this type of this time of year. Spend with friends, family outside in the wonderful game of golf and all that stuff that it brings us. Thank you, Ken. How about yourself? Uh, let's go with Mike. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm truly grateful for museums. I have started to become very interested in history overall, and I just think it's so cool that we have a place that we can go to read the stories and see the objects that actually occurred during certain time periods. Um, it's just incredibly interesting to me. I was uh, I was able to go to the Smithsonian recently, the hangar that has a lot of the old aircrafts, and was able to see the space shuttle Discovery, the actual one, and that's uh, that's pretty incredible that you know, things like that are available to the public. So I really appreciate the efforts that people make to donate to those, to make them free, and also to just put them together and keep them running. Thank you to our federal taxpayers who also will fund some of that as well, Michael. Thank you. I appreciate that. As you start your stroll down perspective lane, it's good as you're moving from fluid to crystal intelligence. Those of you who've been in the book club will understand what that means, but I'd like as Mike is starting his journey. How about Dozek? Thank you, Chris. I'm uh, extremely grateful for really just people, connections. And um, last week, we had the opportunity to get a lot of our centers of influence together, accountants, attorneys, health insurance specialists, real estate agents, lenders, and others, and hear what is going on in, in their industry and really trying to gather information from them so we can serve you better. And also so we can screen those people out, interview them so that if we ever have an opportunity to introduce you to them for anything that you need, that we have the, the trust in them that they can do a good job for you. So we had an event last week, Thursday with them, learned a lot from them and, and took away from that. So I'm just extremely grateful for connections. Outstanding. Thank you very much, Zach. So we'll get into some of the uh, real meat of the program today. And I got to ask you a question. Why are frogs so happy in spring? Because they're finally able to come out of their hibernation mood. That's a horrible joke. I read it. That's from chat.gpt. I thought I'd include it because I go, it's not nearly as good as my bad dad jokes yet. So I thought I'd use that one. But what did the big flower say to the little flower? Hi, bud. So anyway, for those of you who used to watch Looney Tunes, I'll give you one more. What do you call a rabbit with fleas? Bugs Bunny. And anyway, let's move on to the most important things today. So you haven't had dad jokes from me from a bit. I hear there were some good attempts on the previous webinar. I, I mean, I can't confirm it because I haven't seen it yet from compliance, but I'll go with it. It was probably better than mine, and I'm okay with that. But today, uh, I wanted to say a couple of things. These are just some headlines. Google drops its vaccine mandate for entering their buildings. I know you're all really holding on the edge of your seat, but I wanted to let you know, they say we're in a different era now. So it's interesting that they've held on till yesterday. 
with the vaccine mandate. I haven't been anywhere where I've seen that. I just wanted to make sure that was there. There's also still talks of the recession. Um, I know my brother-in-law talked a ton about it over uh, visiting him. There's a lot of people still talking about the potential for recession, and it may be here. It may not be. At least it's in a lot of our minds. So I wanted to bring that up as well. I'm going to call it the great rate debate. That's another one. I've just relabeled this whole time as the great rate debate. Should they have raised rates as quickly? Will they stop? Might they stop? What are the economic data going to tell us today or tomorrow? Hopefully you're watching every time that comes out. Oh, wait. No, you don't need to be. So we'll find the trends. We'll offer the perspective as you need to know. Um, inflation is here. You've all seen it, felt it. It's beginning to feel like a normal piece of the equation where prices are starting to stabilize according to some of the data as well. Uh, China is in a lot of talks and works with Russia as well. This has been in the news a lot lately. Um, and what Russia is at risk of is becoming the economic colony for China, basically where they get all their natural resources and that's it. That's the relationship. So a couple of risks for Russia are that they become uh, really well below what they hope to be, uh, but more importantly, they're just to China, maybe an economic resource, and that's it. Um, some of the March inflation data, I think, is due out today. It may have come out just recently as well, as you've seen some of those. There's an awful lot of talk out there about those, but most importantly, I think people are getting back to a sense of uh, relative normality. Remember, we coming back from Abundance 360 believe you're going to be living a life of acceleration, change at a pace you're not used to, and change at a pace that's going to be increasing. So we're going to talk more in the future at some of our technology and other programs about living a life of acceleration. It might also help if I just put some of these in little two-minute snippets so you can take them as you want and delete them as you'd like to as well. But there's a lot of pieces that come from this um, as I go through. I just wanted to go through those things, and three things I wanted to bring up today uh, when I go to Abundance 360, I want to give you an idea of what it is. It's about 360 people there. Tony Robbins was there, Peter Diamandis, a lot of technologists, but a lot of people who are looking to do something great in the world. Um, some of the people we were with were the former head of AI of Nike. He was in the audience with us. He was with one of my friends. I sat right next to the sixth founder of, uh, or wait, the fifth, I think he was uh, founder of Oculus Rift when they sold it to Facebook for $2.6 billion. He was one of the owners and beneficiaries at the time. Interesting sitting next to him when you first sit down, you think maybe he's just kind of a European kind of a quiet guy. And then you realize he's actually an almost billionaire, kind of an odd thing, but you don't know who people are. What it tells me is that money does not make success. There was still not a lot of interpersonal skill, wasn't a lot of communication. Um, it was interesting to see. But most importantly, at Abundance, we're there to talk about a couple of ideas. We're moving from a world that came from scarcity. Let me explain scarcity versus abundance. Scarcity is your parents used to have a very, um, they probably taught you this, you get a piece of cheese and that cheese or that pie only has so many pieces. We got to keep that pie because that's the only pie we're ever going to get. And we can cut that pie up just a little bit. We can't share it with anybody. We can't give it to anyone. This is our pie. That pie is ours and we can't share it. Nobody can get it, right? They protect it. Draw a line. The world of abundance is, Let's just make more pies. So if you want to look at the world of scarcity, which we're coming from, to the world of abundance, which is the mindset that we were in for four or five days and we're moving toward, that's the big difference. This is my pie. I got to keep it. I can't share it. Can't cut it up. Got to slice it smaller and smaller to today, which is we just make more pies. Anyway, I just wanted to illustrate that before I go into a few different discussions here uh, today from some of the, the guys in the firm uh, and gals, if you will. So let me start first with Mike. How about Mike's minute? Mike, you got a minute to tell us, a minute to win it. All right, Chris, start the timer. Um, oh. So uh, so interesting that you brought up the, the CPI uh, print that was coming out today. So what they found was actually that annually, um, the core CPI came in, or headline CPI, I should say, came in a touch lower than what was actually expected. And it's at the lowest rate since it's been since May 2021. So speaking to that normality, you know, we're all seeing it, we're kind of feeling it, getting a little back to uh, to what that is and what that means. Um, and kind of piggybacking off of, you know, my comments about history earlier and some of those things that I actually enjoy, we want to take a look at history when we don't predict the future in the sense of we look at history in a way that it rhymes with what may happen. So looking back since 1940, there's been 22 times that in the calendar year, the S&P 500 has been down. 17 times in the years following, the S&P 500 has been up since that point. So that means that 77% of the time after a down year, we've gotten a positive year since 1940. Thanks, Chris.
Absolutely. That was uh, 48 seconds. So good job. I'm just joking as you go through. I appreciate that, Mike. Also, a very, very important thing Mike has uh, really brought to Gentian, which I appreciate, is an appreciation for birds. So he has filled the feeder that's right outside of my window, but he's also put together something called the Bird Buddy, which you're going to see is big news at Gentian coming up here. We've got a couple of photos of birds we're going to start sharing with you guys, um, as you see, but it's just some of those uh, fun things that bring Gentian culture a little bit of liberty, humor, but also some natural beauty. So thank you, Mike, for bringing those as well. That's awesome. Uh, let me go, if you will. Uh, actually, I probably should tell another dad joke because it's all sorts of fun for me. Maybe not so much for you, but but I'll go through that. Uh, what did the what did the tree say to spring? What a relief. Anyway, again, you can use those. Feel free if you'd like to. Um, I'd like to uh, share those with you. But actually, at this point, too, I'd like to turn it over to Zach for Zach's facts. Zach, you got some facts that we need to know about? Yeah, thank you, Chris. I'm a little disappointed that we didn't hear an announcement of Mike's promotion for the for the bird feeder duties. It's pretty uh, pretty incredible. Well, we're keeping that under wraps. That's gonna we're gonna unveil that another time, but apparently not anymore. Thanks for letting that out of the bag. <laughs> you let the bird out of the bag, Zach. So sorry. <laughs> there we go. But uh, we'll just run through kind of the, some of the market performance to, to start the year here, like we normally do. Uh, the Dow Jones up about one point six percent to start the year. The S&P 500 is actually up over 7% on the year and 14% still from all time highs. So there's still room to grow. It's actually up 16% since the October lows of 2022. So not many great news has come from the October lows for the market to be up 16% since then. Just goes to show to never predict, never try to time. And uh, the NASDAQ around 15% up for the year and is still 25% off of its highs, which actually was all the way back to November of 2021. So still a significant amount of room to grow in, in the NASDAQ as well. Emerging markets up 4% on the year. Since late last year, depending on the emerging market strategy you're looking at, up 10, 15, potentially even 20% since October as well. International, just below 8% on the year. And really what was amazing to start this week, Mike and Ryan did a ton of work on our team to bring us a bunch of quarterly data with different strategies, different funds, different uh, ETFs that we track. And really what was one of the summaries that we found was the effect of rebalancing, something that we talk about often. It's an annual discipline that we have to really sell high and, and buy low. It was a phenomenal time to do that really any time that we did at the end of last year. And really when we look back to 2022, 2021, 2020, really when you look back over any time period, at certain asset classes do better in certain years than others. Rebalancing proved to be a phenomenal tactic once again last year. And also something that has been a kind of a conversation for the coming out of 2008, 2009 is active versus passive management. When the market's really doing really well for a sustained period of time, passive looks good, right? Just does whatever the, the index is doing, the top five holdings of some of these account for 25% or more of the entire index. That looks extremely good during uptimes. But we're seeing when you have certain corrections like we had last year, active management actually ends up outperforming because they're able to scoop up certain companies that were way overvalued that are now in range that these companies wanna buy. So just a phenomenal job by Mike and Ryan by bringing that to us and reaffirming some of our timeless principles that we have. We just wanted to touch briefly on kind of the fixed income space. It's been kind of a hot topic, if you will, to start this year and really since rates uh, started going up last year. Fixed income, we're going to look at the treasuries. The one year is 4.64%. The five year, 3.6%. The 10 year, 3.5%. And the 30 year, 36 And really the other one that we've been looking at and a question that we've heard is what to do with our potential cash on the outside. Just look at what you're receiving in a savings account. There may be some better options with money market. We've seen some, depending on the strategy that we're looking at, anywhere from four, four and a half to even upwards of close to 5% in money market right now. So just keep a, keep an eye on that outside cash. If it's not needed in the, in the short term, there might be some pretty good strategies out there for you. With that, Chris, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. Awesome. I appreciate that. So it's interesting here. Uh, none of the People so far have said any dad jokes. I guess they pushed them all back to me. So I guess that's my reign. Um, and we also know when a joke becomes a dad joke, right? When it becomes apparent. 
Anyway, so we'll move on as we go from here. Uh, a couple of things I would like to touch base on before we go to Ken's Corner. Both are spelled with a K, Ken's Corner. I love it that way because I just think it should be. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about a couple of different things here. Uh, and maybe more importantly, I want to bring up the subjects of glaciers. Glaciers, extremely important to watch out for. Now, why do I say glaciers? Glaciers are at the polar ice caps. They're on the tops of mountains. Um, how fast do they move? Well, I was at the Perito Moreno Glacier back in 2001, and the Perito Moreno Glacier was the fastest moving glacier in the world at about, I think it moved a foot per day, something in that range. So they don't move very fast, but what do glaciers do? They destroy everything in their path. I was just in a state that appreciated glaciers tremendously because all the topsoil in Wisconsin was moved to the state of Iowa and deposited up to 10 or 20 feet deep. So we in Iowa do thank you Wisconsinites for all your topsoil. But more importantly, when it comes back to glaciers, the items which you don't see moving but can wipe out everything, those are things such as fiat currency, overspending, small mistakes in both government also in policies, things like communism may be taking over. More importantly, the destruction of the family, the mental health of teenagers who eventually become adolescents and adults. These are glaciers for us to watch out for. These are things we look for and trying to find things that are important for you to pay attention to because they are moving so slow that you don't see them and they may wipe out everything. Another one is fiat currency. I will talk more about those at another time. There's not enough time to go through them now, but I just wanted to bring up this subject as glaciers are something to watch out for. Technology is the opposite. It is moving at the opposite speed of glaciers. So when we talk scarcity and abundance, it's like the polar opposites, literally of glaciers and technology. I wanted to introduce that to you because it's an important topic to pay attention to. You may see other patterns and pattern recognition on a go forward basis, according to Tony Robbins, and on a past basis are, is probably one of the most important things we can teach our children, and we have learned. Anyway, before, uh, before I continue with any of my discussion, I'd like to go to Ken's Corner. Ken, enlighten us with a few things we need to know in planning and with your wisdom. Thank you, Chris. I, the glacier has taken hold. <laughs> Just kidding around. No, on a very serious note, planning, uh, we, we had a, we had a wonderful investment and planning committee meeting on Monday together here. Um, it was great. We got to roll up our sleeves. We, we went holding by holding by holding to evaluate the positions we have for you in your with your hard earned money in your portfolio. So it was wonderful. We like what we're seeing right now with our with our holdings right now. Um, again, a couple of pieces that are coming to, to to me from you all in meetings. I'll, I'll give you the top three right now. I hear about gold that comes up a little bit from time to time. Um, cash, which Zach just talked about a little bit as well, and and just planning and staying consistent and not thinking that there's something new that we should be doing. Uh, in times of uncertainty, on times of a lot of chatter in the market, sometimes we, we hear from, from you all is, hey, is there something we should be doing differently? Is there something we should be evaluating that's, that's different? The answer is we are going to bring you the consistency and that level-headedness with you and plan with you during all of this time frame right now, because there is a lot of craziness going on in the world. Um, and some of it is some some of it is good to pay attention to. Some of it is just noise, uh, but we are going to keep our level headedness and the plans that have worked so well for us and so well for our clients. We are going to con continue to bring that that information to you. When it comes to gold, um, some of the times you know when there's uncertainty, you've heard that gold can be a good hedge. Um, now, we're not gold bugs by any means. We don't think we should just flock to gold and, and wait this thing out or whatever we're waiting for, uh, whatever that means. Uh, but we certainly have uncovered and revealed that in, in, the, in, our, in our funds, and this is on purpose, we actually have a gold position in one of the, one of the funds that we do use, physical gold, they're holding it. Um, so we do, have, we do have 
you know, some accessibility to the, to the gold. We do have some of that composition in your portfolio. So know that it's there. It is a good hedge during this time frame, but not to go too far one way or the other with gold and because it can, it can help us during times, but also can hurt us during times as well. And if anybody follows Warren Buffett, he did a huge study on ho holding gold as an investment over a long period of time. And it turns out not to be a very good one. So um, the other piece that Zach touched on a little bit is cash. Um, I'm not going to go too far into this one either. I think Zach did a great job, but a lot of banks are not paying you what you deserve right now. A lot of credit unions, whatever the case, financial institutions are not paying you what you deserve. If you're not really receiving 4% or better on your cash right now for a good, a good portion of it that's there in cash, you should call us because we have solutions for you. Either we can identify them at the bank you're at, or we can identify the solutions that we have here for you as well. So the other one is um, planning. Let's control what we can control right now. We can't control the markets. Is there a recession coming? Chris always does this one. Yes. Yes, there is one. We don't know when, though. But let's can control what we can control right now. Um, the other piece there is financing projects. That comes up right now. Home equity lines of credit used to be two and three and four. Now they're like four, five, six, and seven, maybe eight. So the question becomes, what do we do? Do we finance our projects? Do we use our money in our portfolio? Again, this is a case by case basis, but what we like as a general theme right now is we still like the financing to a point. We have to identify what financing it is just to buy us time with the idea of what the markets are doing right now for us. So that's a general theme that I'm hearing for, from all of you. That's the top three. With that being said, I'm gonna pass it back over to Chris. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate that. I appreciate the idea on the gold, the cash, and some of the planning ideas. Um, it's very interesting when you talk about the some of those different funds uh, that own positions that we should own. Um, gold is definitely a big position that people have a lot of confidence about. And I think you said Warren Buffett is one of those people we kind of listen to. Well, I want to give you one. Uh, successful investing takes time. So this is a kind of an interesting one. There's somebody outside, if you can hear that, doing a little bit of yard work. If not, I'll just keep going. But successful investing takes time, discipline, and patience. No matter how great the talent or effort, some things just take time. You can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. Warren Buffett actually said that. Can you believe this? Another good Warren Buffett is the stock market is the device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient, right? Very interesting as we go along. Um, so let me let me go ahead and see if I can wait for this gentleman to pass by me who is going to be doing some yard work outside so that you can actually hear what I'm about to say. It's good. Um, one more thing from Warren Buffett. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Kind of interesting, right? If there's somebody around in the office right now, can you just run out and maybe have them not do that right by the window? Zach? Any chance you could just run out and see if they could just move out that way? Awesome. They're about done, just so everybody can hear it. Is that bothering anybody else? Can you guys hear that outside? Good. Fantastic. I'll just keep on. So a couple of things I want to talk about here as well. We have recently received, uh, very fortunately, several awards, Barron's, uh, Forbes, a few other magazines. And I want to be very clear on awards. We're, we're blessed to receive them. We're gracious for them, but I've dedicated my life to becoming the best retirement planner possible. I've done everything I can so that you can live your best life. You deserve it. But what's even more important is that I've dedicated and created a team here that has the exact same mindset. So when you see an award, any kind of magazine or something else, I want you to understand that we're proud of getting it. However, what's most important is that you understand that we get it together. You, us, the team, it's very much a we. So be proud of it yourself. It's something I want to share. It's a community that creates success. It's not any, any individual. There's individual efforts in it. But if you also look at a band, inside of a band, sometimes bands do solos and they do great solo work inside of a band. The way I look at our team as well, we have some phenomenal, phenomenal people in our team, but all together we're producing a result for you. I want you to understand when it comes to awards, we don't do them in the sense of, hey, look at us. We do this in the sense of congratulations, look at you. I want to make sure that you guys understand that there's a couple of things as well that I'd like to maybe close on here, if you will, maybe a couple minutes early, and then I'll take questions. Um, I just like saying that because it's kind of fun. But more importantly, uh, as I come back to these two things, uh, and I've said this, somebody asked me about, well, how is it to get to, you know, ascend so much or so high in the business that you're in? And I said, success is easy. 
after you do all the hard work. So if you ever want to tell anybody that, that's my quote as you go through. I probably stole it from somebody, but it's mine presently because I can't, can't remember who I stole it from. But more importantly, I think there's really two ways to wealth. One way is working hard and really long, foregoing everything and getting what you want, or being happy with what you have. One of them might be easier and lead to more fulfillment. It's your choice. So a little couple little pieces I thought were quite interesting here. Before we go to the most important section, I'd like to introduce Jen. Jen, why don't you come on and tell us what we need to pay attention to in our weeks ahead before we get to our next biweekly webinar. Attention to the lawn work because they were outside my window a second ago, but if it's any consolation, I couldn't hear it. So hopefully you guys can either. Um, but the weather is beautiful. We have our birthday lunch today. Mm -hmm. um, so Congratulations and hope you guys have all RSVP'd if you have an April birthday. Um, coming up in May, we're looking at our spring forum. This is one of my favorite forums because Chris has just returned from Abundance 360. Um, so there'll be some really nice information from that. We have May 3rd in Appleton and we have May 4th in Wabatosa at the Blue Mountain Country Club. Um, we have birthday lunch in May on the 24th. And then we close out May on the 31st with Ladies and Gentian and this Next session will be a women's health focus. So hormones, eating, um, all of that good stuff, health as we age uh, with our um, speaker, Michelle Norris. So those are always really, really great. Um, we had a great turnout last time. So we'd love to see some new faces this time. Um, and with that, that's kind of what we have coming up. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thanks for showing us what we kind of have coming up. Super important for us to pay attention to the things that you guys want to participate in. One thing that's important to us is you. Uh, the most important thing to us is you and what it is we do in business. So as such, we'd like to ask you some questions. And if you'd like a question responded to about technology at the program coming up May 3rd, and, and uh, I think it's 5th or 6th, I should say, at, at Blue Mound, whichever the dates are, most importantly, give us that question ahead of time. You can give us yeah, my 3rd yeah, and 4th. But what I'd like you to do is to give us the questions ahead of time. Let us know what those are. Um, if there's some big question you've been seeing or reading about, give us ahead of time. I want to prepare for it to be able to give you a succinct answer. I know I'm not always good at those. I always run on to many, many things, hopefully interesting, but more importantly, I want to make sure you're getting what you want. As such as well, we have a couple of other programs that are beginning here you'll be excited about. Uh, directly driven from needs we're seeing within our, within our client base. We'll introduce those to you very soon here. But I want to make sure that you know those. We have the book club coming up, which is a new book. Jenny will be getting out to you as well called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And what I want to tell you is I've read the book too. Everybody's read the book or heard about it. And they go, oh yeah, heard the book. But in that, until you have revisited it and take it with today's life and perspective, artificial intelligence and technology may be our knowledge base and it may be surpassing us in technical knowledge and things we do. So what does that give us to do? Become better humans. This is the manual for how to work well with other humans. So we're going to go through that and give you some pieces. We've done Love Your Enemies. We've done Strength to Strength. This is a phenomenal book leading right up to what it is we can do better and be better humans. So I'd say re-examining this book is going to be a wonderful exercise for those of you who've been on it before and those who've been interested in it as well. So we'll run those sessions. Jenny will give and Ashley will give you when that's coming up as well. But I wanted to share those with you. So today we talked a little bit about awards. We talked about scarcity and abundance, and we talked about glaciers, some things to pay attention to. Most importantly, I want to thank you, Tremending, for letting us help you live, give, uh, and plan your best life when it comes to retirement. The key is we're going to keep working harder and harder what it is we do and adding great teammates to the team because you deserve it. You deserve to have one of the best retirement groups in America or teams in America at your disposal. With that, I want to thank you tremendously for what you've offered us today, which is your time. I know that's one of your most valuable resources, and we look forward to seeing you in the next two weeks, either in person or with our programs um, online such as this. Once again, thank you from Gentian signing off today. This is Chris Doty.